Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're all good. I'm fine and dandy. I've got a busy day at home, so as part of my busy day, I thought I know, I'm gonna make my absolute favorite comfort food. Now, having said that, <laughs> I've just thought I've got too many favorite comfort foods to actually call this one my favorite, but I love this one because it contains pearl barley. Oh, love it. I absolutely love pearl barley. So I'm gonna make a soup. I'll have some today, but I'll also have some tomorrow. And by tomorrow, the barley will have swelled up even more. It'll be even more gorgeous and comforting. So essentially, this is a squash and barley soup. It's dead simple. We'll get onto that in a second. But I just thought it would be quite a good time to have a quick word about squashes, our winter squashes in general, because I hope that some of you have still got loads stored that are doing really, really well. I've just had a count of mine. I've got enough left, I think, eke them out to have one a week and it'll take me right into the beginning of June. And that's one of the things I love about squash is that from pretty much the end of September, I can be eating them all the way through to May, maybe, maybe just into the beginning of June. They're stored without any electricity, so there's no issues about, oh, if a freezer breaks down, this, that and the other. They really couldn't be easier. But I have noticed um, some have stored better than others. So over the years, I kind of, I grow my bog standard bottom nuts, which I like, and then I've gradually over the years tried one or two other ones. Oh, I like that one, I'll keep it. Oh, that one's okay, not so great, maybe I won't grow it again, that sort of thing. So of all the ones I grew last September, just trying to remember now, there was the bog standard bottom nut, the baby bottom nut, the Suisse berry, which is another type of bottom nut, there were the Geet Okosomin, that great big uh, North American, Native American, Indian squash. There were the Rouge Vif de Tomp, which is the big, gorgeous Cinderella's carriage pumpkin squash. And what else? Oh, and the Delicata. So, I treated them all exactly the same for storage harvested them when they were nice and dry, sunny day, gave them all a bit of a wipe over, made sure they all had a nice chunk of stalk left on so that that very soft part where the stalk joins, there's, there's no chance of damaging it. <clears throat> and then they're just stored in a cool place, out, just outside my flat, but where it's still protected from the elements, it's kind of half in, half out. And then gradually they, they come indoors as and when I need to use them. So they're frost free, but they're cool. I'd say probably around about 10 degrees. So all given the same treatment, but I noticed the Geet Okasomin started to have little, little tiny specks on the end uh, where it looked like it was about to start to go moldy. And that was way back in, I think it was about the beginning of December. It was around the time just after the op, so yeah, it's about the beginning of December. So it was only about six weeks from harvest that it started to turn. So I thought, right, giddy up, let's get it used. And it wasn't too big, so I used the whole thing and made a massive batch of soup and popped the soup in the freezer. So brilliant, it wasn't wasted, and it tasted great. Then, just before Christmas, I noticed the same was happening with the Rouge Vif de Tomp, that's that beautiful sort of flattish the classic cinderella pumpkin yes yeah, so that was just before christmas that started to spec up in places <clears throat> so again rather than waste it cut into it get it chopped up get it in the freezer it's far too much to use in one go so i chunked it up got it into the freezer yay also tasted gorgeous so the remaining ones, they're all storing really well, and I thought I'd quickly show you because hopefully this is how yours are looking too. Um, so there's the Delicata. That's lovely. I cooked some of this last night for me and a friend. It was really, really yummy. Quite sweet. The 
Cicerine de Berry, which has that really beautiful orange flesh. This is the one I'm going to use today because it's a gorgeous one. It's just the right weight for today. Butternut family. Bog standard butternut. This one's come up quite small. That's the kind of normal size. Again, storing absolutely perfectly and then hang on a sec here's some of the baby butternut which have been gorgeous they were from seeds from shannon last year thank you so i think it looks like for me anyway all of the butternut types store perfectly well just in the air in a coolish place great and it that does kind of make me consider what i want to grow so I will grow the Rouge Vif de Tomp again and the Geet just because they were such beautiful pumpkins to look at. The Geet, because it was so unusual, it got people talking and, and I love that if there's something I'm growing that's getting people's interest going, that's great. So I will do both of them again, but they won't have a massive space given to them because that will be more just for food sort of for October, November, December. The butternuts, all the different types of butternuts will be given the most space because they're prolific croppers and they store well. And at the end of the day, they taste great, they're versatile. I love my butternuts. So what am I cooking today? Well, this is possibly one of the most complicated dishes I will do with you guys. Hang in there, it is well worth it. This recipe requires about five or six hundred grams of squash. So this one is just about perfect. Ah, just sorry, actually, just before I go on to talk about the ingredients, the other thing about in consideration of, of what to grow, I've loved the delicata, absolutely love it, and they're stored really well, but the whole cavity right the way through is a seed cavity. So there's a lot of seed and not much flesh. And when you compare it with, say, a box standard bottom art, if you think about it, the seeds are just in the bottom here and all of this top is flesh. So I will still do a couple of delicatas, but again, they won't get given the space that the regular butternuts do because, and I can feel it even just in handling them, there's not much difference in size, but in terms of mass of flesh in them, the butternuts way beats the delicata. Sorry, little digression. So this recipe, back to this recipe. So yes, about five or 600 grams of squash. The reason it made me think of it is because these is really they're packed full of flesh, lovely. And then another ingredient is our beautiful pearl barley. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? I've just given this a quick rinse because it gets a bit dusty in its packaging. And that's it. <laughs> Two ingredients. Trust me, it tastes gorgeous even with these two ingredients and a couple of litres of stock. <clears throat> This is a really nice recipe to do if you're trying a new type of squash for the first time because it's just that squash flavour you're going to get. Have it, have this soup, and if you love it, you love the squash if you don't want to roast one to see. Okay, so let's get on with the business end of things. <laughs> so just to recap the ingredients in case anyone missed it, a squash and some barley and stock. And that's it but specifically for those who want amounts it's five to six hundred grams of squash the pearl barley is one cup which is about 150 grams I think but it's one cup that's all you need to worry about <clears throat> and then I've got two liters oh let's turn that down a bit I've got two liters of stock on the go into which I'm going to pop the barley sticking it because I rinsed it. <clears throat> Pop the colour back on. So that's going to simmer for about 40 minutes, 4-0. The pumpkin is going to take about 20 to 25 minutes and all I'm going to do is chunk it up, whack it into this steamer pan 
set the steamer on top of the barley after the barley's had 15 minutes and then by the time the squash has had its 25 minutes too the whole lot will have been on there 40 minutes and we'd be ready for the next step so it's dead 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 simple so this is the bit that always scares me cutting a big pumpkin and i know my knife could probably do with a sharpen but it's not too bad Look at the colour of that flesh. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I've cut through some of my seeds. Now I'm just going to scoop the seeds out. Sorry, coming behind you. Just going to scoop the seeds out with a, with a spoon. But don't get rid of them. <laughs> what I will do after this little cooking session is done, I'll clean them up. And I will um, basically roast them because what's yummier in the evening when you're curled up reading a book, reading the paper, watching a movie, whatever, than nibbling on roasted pumpkin seeds. Yum, yum, yum. I would like to have roast sunflower seeds with this as well, but unfortunately the squirrels had the blooming lot of <laughs> the sunflowers this year. Okay, that will do. So I'm just going to peel and chop it and get it in this pan. Then whack that on top of the barley in 15, well it's now more like 13 minutes. Once that's had its um, full time, I'll come back to you and show you the next step. Nearly there in the most super duper simple recipe ever. Yay! So your gorgeous steamed pumpkin, pop it into a bowl. Get rid of that pan. <clears throat> and then quite simply all I'm going to do is use the little hand blender, the stick blender, whatever you want to call it, and blend this lovely lot down to it. <laughs> Smells lovely. this stage if you wanted to you could add a bit of butter um, maybe sort of like yeah a big knob of butter 50 grams of butter mm -mm -mm. and that would make it obviously considerably richer but as a rule I don't use butter so I don't have any in the house so I shan't add any but actually it doesn't matter if you don't have any now <clears throat> I'm going to bring you guys over to see in a sec but just put that all that pureed pumpkin in with the stock and barley. And at this stage, oh don't waste, don't waste. Let me show you so you can see. At this stage it doesn't look like anything much. It looks, I don't know, it looks like, oh, it just looks very unappetizing and swampy. Just gently start to stir it in and it will all meld together beautifully. And like I said, I'll have some of this now, but I'll also, I'll have some tomorrow and the barley just keeps soaking it up, soaking it up and getting plumper and plumper and creamier and creamier. Yum, yum, yum. Right, let's get a bowl served up. just asking to be dived into isn't it right let's have a little taster so <clears throat> as usual I haven't added any salt or pepper add that to your taste there's a, a tiny bit of salt in the stock hardly any I just find I don't need it but if you are accustomed to adding salt to your food try it with a little bit maybe try it with a bit less than normal mm. hmm. 
Oh, the pearl barley. Excuse me. Oh, it's so lovely. It's so lovely. If I could be drip fed pearl barley, I would. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, because I wouldn't enjoy the sensation of it in my mouth. It's such a gentle, subtle soup. I love that delicate, uh, the Sussuing de Berry. It's a really delicate flavour. Try it with different squash, see what you like. You might find that you like a much stronger flavoured squash. You might find, like I said, that you want to add salt or pepper or whatever else, fine. Add some butter at the stage when you're blending the pumpkin, if you like. You could add a little bit of cream once it's done, if you're really naughty. But look, two ingredients, and it makes a gorgeous, really hearty, really comforting meal on another grotty grey day. What could be better? There's a bit of autumn warmth in a bowl. I love it, and now I have to go and scoff the rest of it. So, for now, I'll say cheerio. Happy cooking, happy experimenting with your squash. I hope you all have some left stored still. You should do, they shouldn't have gone off. Not the butternuts anyway. <clears throat> but it's also a kind of a good reminder at this time to just have a little once over of all your stored produce, whether it's your onions, your apples, your parsnips and carrots if they're in boxes of sand. Have a look at any, have a look through all your stored stuff. If anything is starting to look a bit, mm, is that going a little bit hinky? Quickly whip it out, create something with it, and even if you then freeze it, brilliant. Right, time for me to scoff. Take care, everyone. <laughs>